See what he has. Looks like he may grab himself up a Lee Sin, seeing the Renekton and the Thresh ah. so far. It actually goes to Kha'Zix. And what I actually like about this is COG has an amazing amount of versatility on these first few picks. Even though we see the Lulu, oh yeah, that's going to be a top, uh, mid lane Lulu because that's all we've seen. Aphromu has definitely been one to play a lot of Lulu yep. support in the past. It's already got a win on it. Yep, got one win on it. Kha'Zix as well. A crazy, crazy solo queue jungler as far as power goes. Uh, banned in pretty much all high ELO solo queue games, but he's yet to make his way onto the competitive scene. Could also be Link in the mid lane with it. They have so many options with where they go in the rest of the team comp, and it means XDG's picks have to be very generic because they don't necessarily know what they're up against. Smithy doesn't have that Sivir. He is just waiting. Every time I think of Xmithy Sivir, I see that 8-1 eight, and 8 score, and he's almost been able to replicate it twice. He's forced possibly on dilution this game, and we see if, if Nick Wu gets by, his play style is to be a fighter, so it would only fit it that much more. It's really interesting how Lucian is so heavily picked uh, with pretty poor stats in the LCS. I believe he's the most picked AD carry, but he had a 38% win rate coming mm -hmm. into this. Yeah. I think it's because he's every AD carry player's fallback. When they don't get what they want, they'll just pick Lucian. And it's kind of a stopgap solution to try and fit every role, but very rarely is it an ideal scenario. Caitlyn picked yeah, up. in half the games and only wins 40%. Yep. He'll be going up against Double Lift Caitlyn this game. Two losses on that for Double Lift, actually. So not the most comfortable AD carry for him. We'll see how Smithy prevails with his choice. The Leona is being hovered for Aphromu. He's actually had some pretty great games on Leona recently. Surprisingly enough, even though all of us think of Leona as being this amazing champion for Aphromu, he's one of three on yeah. in the split. It's actually his most defeated champion in the LCS. It does synergize very well with their team composition, though. It is indeed that jungle Kha'Zix, so we need to look for uh, Dexter to get a lot yep. of farm and a lot of power here. One interesting thing about running Lulu in the mid lane, you don't necessarily uh, need a tank out of the jungle because she makes a tank with her ultimate in yeah. these team fights, and it means they can bring more damage in that role. I like the overall team composition there from CLG. Oh, locking this in. Very interesting pick here. Man Cloud has not played a Karthus yet this year, but it was a, a bit of his picks as we go back in the past splits. He definitely played Karthus. Yeah, I want to see this lane matchup, actually, because we've seen so much Lulu dominating in the mid lane. She's really this thing that came in as a bit of a counter pick to the Blanc or the heavier assassins being able to bully almost everyone out of lane. But maybe mm -hmm. Karthus will be able to outrange Lulu, right. not get hit by those you know, pesky picks over her head yeah. just to get hit by the multiple glitter lances and maybe just kind of farm this one out and take it to late game. Well, at least you can stop a little bit of the damage because you can wall of pain the glitter lance as soon as it comes out and she won't chase you down and consistently hit you. So there's a little counterplay there, but yeah, he's going to have to land some good skittles, especially with the speed up of Lulu. It's going to be a very interesting mid lane. There's so going to have to be a lot of farming, I think, <laughs> by, by Man Cloud, and that, that puts a lot of the emphasis on yeah. CLG to make big plays early on in the game. Kha'Zix needs to fight a lot in games in order to be effective. Well, the champs are locked in, so let's check in with who you at home think will be taking this next match. According to LOLEsports.com, 90% of you think that CLG are going to rack up another win. That's a big vote. That's our biggest yeah. vote of the day. No, Second it was the 94-6, right? And that one was wrong. Yeah, it was. You usually are when they're, they're that big. Surprisingly, we've seen a lot of surprising yeah. games <laughs> in the LCS so far. Across both splits, we over in Europe, you know, Fnatic went 7-0. and Yep. Now they're 7-7. and seven. They're still was, winning votes. Coast was bottom of the table. They won their last three, including breaking TSM's 11-game win streak. I'm liking the mix-up. Yeah, there's a lot of parity, and I think it's almost the evolution of, of competitive League of Legends here because there's more teams with all the practice time and the resources. The, the level of competition is just higher, and because of that, you see more games traded. Consistent practice. Everybody is going to eventually make everyone better. And that's what we're coming to. These bottom teams are starting to really scrape and make their way back up top. It is a 6-6 six and six CLG versus a 3-9 and nine XDG Gaming here as we are into the game. Yeah, this this will be Link's next chance to really show off in the mid lane. Uh, one thing that is so effective that we almost got to see in CLG's game against TSM is Lulu's ability to help double lift Kite. Uh, mm. The move speed that Lulu grants 
with a lot of ability power, uh, scales, I believe it's 1% move speed per 10 ability power. So there's a chance that Lulu can get up to like 100% move speed. You just see this person zooming around the map. You have that for about uh, five seconds. Yeah, and because of Doublelift's mechanics, how well he can move in between auto attacks, mm -hmm. he becomes nearly unhittable if he's playing the team fights right. As long as COD positions, they can pull that off. That's one of the biggest things that people attributed to Jinx. Cutie Pie said in an interview, when you have that much mobility, nobody's touching you. And you can offer that with Lulu every so often. Getting a little poke out. He got one shot on Aphromoo. You're going to feel that one. Oh, wait, he's got Doran Shield. Just going to regen it up. Mm-hmm. He's good. Biscuits, Doran Shield, both same start for the bottom sides, and we don't have any of those sweepers coming out. We've got to remember, we're definitely keeping an eye on Zuna. Has recently switched from the jungle to support, and Nick Wu is coming from sub onto the starting roster here yeah. in his first game. Well, not first game in the LCS, but back in the LCS. And what's a more difficult bottom lane to face than Doublelift and Aphromoo in your first 2v2. Here's a test. Yeah. Aphromoo and Doublelift love to try and make aggressive moves 2v2. The recent patch changes, I feel like, have actually benefited COG a lot now that we're seeing a reduction in lane swaps mm. with the top and mid lane turrets having damage reduction early on in the game. Because Doublelift and Aphromoo have always really focused on their ability to 2v2 lane. Uh, and especially against Zuna, who is very new to the support role. We have to see how much advantage COG can take of the situation. Wow. Smithy definitely trying to get a push on this lane here. Consistently queuing these. He does not want to find himself under the turret against Double Lift now for Moo. It looks like he wants to give that to them. Yeah, they want to get level 2 first. It's yeah. huge in this lane. Couple creeps into that next wave. They'll be getting it. Aphromoo's staying aggressive, though. Oh, good pop there on the passive with the Peacemaker damage. And they're staying in this one with the damage trade. Keep going in. Good farming by Xmithy. They're staying 66 with the auto attack trades to the champions in between. You can see double Next lift. creep is level two. Yep, there they it is it. for Zuna. Xmithy gets it as well. They're going to go in for the flay, but he puts himself a few steps forward before that flay. That's extra damage. The headshot's up, but it looks like they both back off. They got the ignite out of Zuna. Yeah, once you get three melee minions down in the second wave mm -hmm. is when you hit level two. If you're a bot lane player, focus on that because it'll yeah. kill you if you're not paying attention. They try to take it instantly by surprise, and you can see Aphromu in and out of the bush, trying to gain that control, and Zuna doing the same thing. It usually supports win the lane for the AD carry. The ADs yeah. are just right-clicking. Gotta have presence. Gotta have presence. Yeah. Link taking a skittle in the mid lane. He's losing the damage trade here, but he has the shield, and there's the damage back. It only takes a few seconds for Link to get back on track here. Yeah, I feel like Man Cloud's gonna be trapped in his turret for the majority of this lane. Just based on the move speed that Lulu mm -hmm. can get just to get the Glitter Knights down on a Man Cloud, uh, it, it's not going to be an easy lane. It actually gives Dexter a lot of ability to roam around because I don't see any pressure coming out of that mid lane Karthus. Oh, a little bit of push there. The behavior of CLG goes quite heavy. They had a good source of minion wave there to two minions, and they wanted to use all of it. Like Smithy and Zuna read it quite well, keep themselves safe, but Dexter's out in the wing here for the gank. Yeah, Man Cloud. Still pretty close to his turret, but if they get the Glitter Lance down, there's a chance they could force the flash out. Playing this one safe. They're making sure he gets the last few hits in. The Those melees are gone. For another yep. shot. Yep. Sliced out. A good hit. Actually, this could definitely be a kill coming in, and there it is. Link with the flash and the hit up. But they're going to be still going to the bottom lane. Zuna's trying to reactivate some gold oh, in the favor nice of CLG. A very nice hook indeed from Zuna. Looks like they're going to pick up the kill for Nick Wu in the jungle. Well, there you go. Zuna landing a hook, creating that first kill. And it's actually Man Cloud who's alone in the mid lane, waiting too long to flash away. Yeah. Uh, he waited until he took the majority of damage from Dexter and then flashed away. He could have flashed that safely and lived. So it's actually a mistake that cost Man Cloud that mid lane. And a good play by Zuna, the new support in the bottom lane, to try and even it out. That was a good play from Link as well. Getting off of Man Cloud, uh, the isolation damage from Dexter could come in. And they capitalized beautifully there. Five minutes into the game, it is go one for one though, as CLG uh, were killed in the bottom lane, thanks to Zuna. Or thanks to Nick Wu, actually. Yeah. It's going to take a while to get that. <laughs> Dexter's really and Zuna, low actually. here. Yep. Maybe coming in for a gank on Benny. But these are with the full rage bar on Benny and an ignite. Uh, if Dexter goes in the wrong area, he would kill himself. He just used that full. He only got half of it, so he can either stun somebody up or get some of that health back. But he goes Ooh. for the flash in the E to get out, but it's going to be the kill. They return it very nice, but it's not going to be the buff transfer. Yeah, so just a strict one for one there. Jungler kill, mm -hmm. jungler kill on both sides. Uh, but because Benny is dead in the end, should be able to get a bit of an experience advantage in that lane. Just just another trade there, though. Definitely 
Bit of a different XDG we've seen here. There's Double Lift, Aphromu trying to get the aggression on, and Zuna still trying to get the damage in as well. They get what they can out of this, but it's not half Ooh. as much damage. He throws out the hook, and they will be able to trade a bit more. The no-look hook already got the Thresh <laughs> mechanics down to face your champion in a different yeah. direction than your hook windup is, so it's unpredictable. It's a half-second channel time on that Thresh hook, which is a quarter-second longer of a channel time than other hooks like the Blitzcrank. Yep. Uh, but he doesn't turn to his target, which makes it somewhat unpredictable. Oh, this is scary. Link? Oh, yeah. oh wow. Man Cloud, 110 HP, but was facing off against Link, knowing that small window of abilities being down could have gave him the kill. They both sit here, start to chug up their potions, and they stay in mid. Still got his exhaust. Not necessarily going to get in range to use it against Link, though. He's got to keep in mind that any type of aggression he does on Link, Link has his Lulu wild growth. Yeah still available, so even though he looks very low, Link is actually quite healthy in that lane. Ignite and Flash are down for Link, so he's playing the safe one, getting the Glitter Lances out when he can. He's going to back right now, possibly finish up that Athenes, or no, put in the boots first, because he doesn't have the full amount of gold. Benny in the top lane picks himself up a pickaxe. He's got himself a bit of a gold lead, but we've seen Nian just come out of nowhere in game, so it's still a possibility. Yeah, Nian is always been a stronger team fight top laner mm. than he has been a laner. Uh, seldom would we see Nian really dominate a lane. And this is an example of that. He's actually falling a little bit behind here. 51 to 36 against the overpowering Renekton. Yeah, is what you're going to get. And Benny's utilizing that to his full advantage right now. Gives himself a ward so he can keep pressuring against that turret. Looking at Nick Wu in the jungles. That's his first time here on the starting bench. Or, yeah. It looks like they're going to give it to Mancloud. I thought he actually got that away just from the hit, but no deals. Nick Wu is going to make his way to the bottom side. Looks like he actually backs off. They're not going to go for any engagement. They feel like it would be too dangerous. Yeah, they're, they're kind of content just farming here. A uh, couple things. The XGG bottom lane has done pretty well yeah. against Double Lift and Aphromoo. Yes, they got a gank, but they're one kill ahead, even though the kill went to the jungler. CS is still pretty close. Mm -hmm. Mid lane, despite Mancloud's mistake of not flashing away too early, uh, or, or sorry, of flashing away too late. Right. He stayed even in farm, and Link hasn't been able to roam around yet. The main advantage that COG actually has right now, I feel like, is in Dexter's Kha'Zix. Being able to pick up that one kill, he hit level 6 before Nick Wu. He's actually 7 before Nick Wu was 6. Uh, he's going to be a one that needs to go around and make some plays. See what Doublelift can do in this lane. A bit different of a, a leveling system for him. He doesn't have the W yet. Three and two, two in the net. See what he gets. He's going to get the ultimate next time. So he's two levels still without that trap. We'll see how it affects the team if they get ganked on. He's looking pretty good right now. 61 to 55 CS and not as many wards on the side of CLG. A lot of wards in mid. And Zuna's yeah. been focusing on already a pink ward he's put down, but a lot of consumables. Yeah, trying to get some of that brush control down. I do want to point out the Spirit of the Other Lizard is completed on two Kha'Zix. Mm -hmm. uh, that gives him some tremendous buff control, but let's check out this gank on the turret. Oh, Link is reading this one nicely. The wild growth uh -oh. on the end, and that's not what he wanted. The turret shot takes one down. It's still sniping out Nick Wu, and they get a double help from the turret. It's one for one going to Nian and Link. Yeah, that's the roam right there of Lulu. There was no control in the mid lane by Mancloud, so Link could just walk up that top lane. That was very premeditated. Nian yeah. called from a mile away, hey, I think they're going to dive me. Come help me in the lane, and that's exactly what he did. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Dexter's war. not in a good spot right uh -oh. now. A few shots from him on one side, a few shots on the other side. Oh, oh sticky moves. wait a minute. He puts on the invis. Can he do it again? Don't walk through the other side. Oh, it's all right. He goes down. Alpha Moon not in such a good spot, but he finds Link on the other side. It looks like the buddy system could keep them safe here. Man Cloud wants to initiate a little bit more. He had nicely has gotten himself a red and a blue buff. Yeah, very confident call there by Dexter, but without knowledge. As soon as that's warded inside, since Link had roamed top lane, there's no way he could get uh, any way of dealing with the collapse. Mm -hmm. This dragon now goes to XDG. Trying to make plays. Dexter's that guy. He will always go and try to make it for the team. This time it hurts a little bit, yeah. but there's still 400 gold up despite. So what he was trying to do, uh, because he had evolved his Q first on Kha'Zix mm -hmm. and he'd finished his li li Ezer Elder Lizard item, yes. uh, was just destroy the dragon. Kazus can easily solo it while taking no damage. So if it wasn't warded, it would have been an intelligent play. I think it's Ooh. just too high risk though. There was no pink on the area and he jumped wow. in from the back. So straight up mistake there by Dexter. That wave clear in mid lane. You see a man cloud left for just a second and he almost doesn't get back to the siege wave that's crashing into the turret. 
Link is trying to play this to keep Man Cloud right there. And it's not a problem for him. He can always Requiem and help the team, but they would definitely like him at things like the Dragon, which just helped for kills like that. Yeah. So see if they can keep him going. The gold is now evened up, and oh, Link just keep putting him into the turret. They should get this yeah. mid turret quite soon. It's relentless, considering Link also got the double buffs off of Nick Wu in that mm -hmm. top lane gank is a lot of pain. But this is going to turn in, I think, to a very interesting game uh, by the fact that we have seven kills already at 11 minutes and the fact that Mancloud's Karthus is going to scale quite aggressively. Uh, not to mention just how interesting it is having Caitlyn with Lulu in team fights. There's a gank mid, though. Yeah, they bait this one in. They knew he would stay. Mancloud's a little too close on the backside, forcing the flash here. That didn't go exactly how they expected. Yeah, they were expecting a little bit better yeah. of a bait and switch there. They ended up biting off a bit more than they could chew. Dexter had to burn a lot to get away from that. And I believe he also just flashed by mistake uh, in the Wraith area. His flash just went on cooldown. That's going to hurt Dexter later. Ooh. Link taking some damage here in the mid lane, using that W to get himself around with the speed steroid. And he will stay safe for Man Cloud. Man Cloud now 1 1 and 0 on the game. We've been also kind of, you know, harping on him a little bit throughout the games to see where has he been. You know, he was the highest kills last split, but he hasn't yeah. been showing this time. We'll see if Karthus is the one that brings it out. It's his first game on Karthus, so maybe we're turning over newly. Well, a lot of news had came out by XGG struggles, but there's an off bottom lane. On to Zuna. They're trying to take out the support. Smithy stands there knowing he can take a few shots before they turn onto him. Yeah, no flash on Zuna. Mm -hmm. When you're against a Leon and you have no flash, it's a very dangerous place to be. Uh, out a bit too far without jungle support. Good gank by CLG. Trying to use that calling. 400% damage to minions is not going to be enough with Aphromoo putting himself right in the front as a human meat shield. They take down the bottom turret. Good gold coming in for CLG, and they finally start to separate that gold in their favor. 13 yeah. minutes in. A little bit more pressure, and CLG can get down the mid turret as well. Maybe getting them enough of a gold advantage, they can start forcing fights. This is a very critical moment in the game for XGG that they do not fall too far behind and succumb to the relentless pressure that COG is putting out. Well, we see that it looks like Nian has kind of taken control of that lane on the top side now that Benny is past six, or post six, rather. Yeah, level 10. Yeah. Lane starts switching around. Sunfire Cape is too much for the Tiamat to shred through. And I did want to get back a little bit um, to XDG and how a lot has come out about how they've been struggling and why they've been struggling. A lot of it is people just saying they haven't adapted to the new state of the game. Uh, in player interviews, it doesn't rely as much on early game anymore. So more of the mid-game tactical play needs to come out. Right. Uh, which was why they did the Zuna roll swap in the first place, because they wanted to get that mid-game tactical play out. But even now, Mancloud goes back to someone like Karthus, who is not good early game, even right. more so about trying to make it into the mid-game. They've been struggling in that early game, which is not supposed to be very important, but I still think it is quite important. The next GG... Uh, trying to switch it up with the Karthus pick, basically. Right. Well, they look for the aggression from Benny early and Karthus late game. So it works out a little bit, but if they don't get anything from either of those champions, then you're just kind of up the river without a paddle or you're facing a Kha'Zix and a Leona at the same time. That's not going to be good for Zuna. Yeah. He goes down and the top lane still getting aggression. Nien has to be careful. He can't get too close to that turret with the Sunfire on, but he can with a wild growth. Requiem not going to do too much here, but give a tickle as the double kill comes in for Link. Yeah, it's a very critical moment in the game, and it's all going to CLG. Yeah. They're getting the proper roam kills. Kha'Zix is finding isolations. He went full damage, whereas the solo laners are tag teaming. And Mancloud's just sitting in the mid lane trying to help with his ultimate. Still hasn't pushed down the turret, while CLG's taking the sides. And that turret's not going to be anything that falls fast for a Karthus. He can push the wave yeah. up there, but you can see it's not even down to half health, and he's been by himself for a good minute now. Eight to three, CLG has the kills in their favor, and the turrets are falling like dominoes right now for XDG. Yeah. Very good things coming out for CLG. They look to be in complete control. They know the dragon comes up in a minute. They have time to back, buy some big time items. Mm. I mean, just looking at Link, he's got 2,000 gold on Lulu unspent. As they're pushing mid without him, everything looking up for CLG right now. Definitely moving as a group. It's something we've pointed out consistently from week to week now that CLG's movement and communication has been just on top. The only thing that really gets yeah. by it is a, is a dragon fight or something where they weren't there first. Yeah, really getting Link back to his natural position in mid lane, giving Dexter some time to settle in, mm -hmm. spend a lot of time corresponding with the team, just watching them play. Obviously, they've been having a lot of conversations with their coach, yeah. Monte Cristo as well, trying to get everything settled. Uh, and they're looking much more poised 
than XGG right now. Making fairly decisive plays, even though Dexter's made a few mistakes. Mm -hmm. One for the Dragon, one that accidental flash that he's still waiting to get back. All things considered, though, big edge, 5,000 gold lead, and a very yeah. pivotal fight at Dragon coming up. The, push, the position that CLG put themselves in allows them to easily work around those little mishaps as well. They don't have to go outside the box in their own structure. Could be pressuring here as they try to get the pink ward. Yeah, Dexter's a bit low on mana, but the damage he brings on Kha'Zix will be very key in trying to execute a target. He would love to be level 11 so he could get some resets, but he's really just a single target killer right now, just with that maxed Q. CLG's going to be very careful not to overcommit in this Dragon Pit, knowing that if right. Karthus gets in the right position, it could mean a lot of trouble. It's still big damage. His Requiem is down, which is a window CLG knows they're working with right now. That long cooldown of Karthus is... And we'll see if they can get themselves in the right spot. Right now, this is quite a dosey -si do from both teams, and they don't seem to want too much as we see XDG really backing off. And oh, there's the initiation. Leaving Zuna out in the front. They had to think that that was going to happen. Yeah, that was another miscommunication by XDG right there, and the oh, fight continues. The resets to come in possibly for Dexter here. He gets one for himself, and he gets wild growth on as well. CLG is feeling very confident in these fights and not trying to push too much. It's Smithy! He tries to get himself out sneakily. You can see him kind of just holding true. He's going to go down valiantly. Yeah, Dexter had hit level 11 as well, so he mm -hmm. got to jump around everything in the favor of CLG. I'm also being told that Dexter's, what I thought was an accidental flash, was actually intentional, so apologies if that is the case. CLG in complete control of taking this dragon. We'll see, Dexter bringing out a new jungler again, and he seems to be quite well after his quick dragon mishap. Didn't seem to affect his mind game too much. Nick Wu, definitely getting into that fight mentality. Says, let's go, 3v1, guys. What do you got for me? To get the slow down, no red buff to come from anybody on this Ooh. one. And he gets a nice lantern away from the Zenith Blade. Oh, oh he gets him. Wow. Damage back on the fountain. Yeah, there was not quite the window mm -hmm. to get that recall. Within that quarter second, the recall still makes. Let's take a look at this fight, though. It wasn't much of a fight. No. Uh, Zuna was out with the rest of his team. Nick was doing a jungle camp. Their laners are pushing side lanes. A classic miscommunication and a clean collapse by CLG. And Link was able to walk through a ward on that one. XDG was kind of yeah. just considering their they own. They were and... way out of position. X Smith, he yeah. tried to recall, uh, just gets completely collapsed upon. Everybody. XTG just out of sorts. Everybody trying to get an assist out of that one. Double lift was the one missing out. He was a little late to the party of Xmithies. His going away party. Eight, 11 to 3 now, 18 minutes into the game, and it's 7,000 gold has quickly been accrued by CLG as they've made their way across the map. Now back to the top turret with uh, Nian and Link. They've kind of had a buddy system up there with each other. Yeah, very big lead that CLG has right now. Dexter has made it through the mid game, which can be scary for Kazix before he gets that resetted jump. Uh, but you can see a 7,000 gold Kazix, higher than everyone else on XGG, 8,000 gold in the solo lanes. Uh, Double Lift had a pretty decent lane, but nothing spectacular. This right. has just been everyone on CLG winning. Link in particular, uh, I think with his roaming, has done the most damage, really punishing XGG for having that immobile Karthus in the mid yeah. lane. Uh, Mancloud has been completely incapable of helping out the rest of his team, and Link has been all over the place. Yeah, CLG as a team has been just hopscotching around. They'll stay at the top turret if they see everybody. They want it. Oh, man, right on to Mancloud. Aphromu, Solar Flare after Solar Flare has been dead on from game to game. We said that, you know, losses is one to three. He has one win yeah. and three losses on Leona, but his plays that he can make are still perfect. Well, Leona benefits from team coordination yeah. as well. And CLG is looking more coordinated lately. Therefore, that Leona pick is better. I think there were two pink wards in that brush as well. Maybe just one of the normal. CLG's able to clean those out just fine, though. See what they can do as they go for the top lane. Like I said before, they went in that engagement. CLG really switches turrets. As soon as they see too many people there, they go to a different one. They don't want to just sit here and stare at you forever. Interesting ping. There was a big wave that Dexter wanted to go for. He's now peeled back to the mid lane. This could mean an initiation by CLG. If Aphromoo's ultimate comes back up, I'm surprised they peeled off that side wave uh, if they're not going to go in. Well, Double Lift has to feel super safe right now. A red buff on himself, he can practically stay safe by his own divides here. 
We'll see what he can do. He is level 11. We see 13s and 12s surrounding him from the solo lanes. And actually, Dexter in the jungle doing pretty big things for himself. Nick Wu is level 10 to Dexter's 12. Yeah, not to mention there's the death cap on Lulu, who is just yeah. the ultimate protector for double lift. Yeah, right. Uh, we were talking about the W. 600 plus health from wild growth. And even just the help pick shield is 443 right now in a double lift. And just because XG is so far behind, yeah. if XG tries to focus any type of singular target link, will be able to save him pretty much by himself. And this is just kind of a one-off. CLG doing uh, Baron as Link Kazakhs is giving Baron everybody control. hell here. Kazakh kills Baron so fast with those isolated Qs, and Link is really just holding off the rest of the team. Uh, Nick Wu uses the Vault Breaker to get it. He'd have to flash for a potential steal. There it is. No, they're not going to get it. It goes to Dexter. He gets a nice smite down. A Solar Flare hits two again, and they instantly wipe that out. It's something XDG had to try for. Yeah, they had to get a steal, but once again, they went in very slow, mm -hmm. not all together. Karthus didn't make it over the wall while they were going in for the steal. Now it is a five on three with Baron buff CLG push up the mid lane. They're making it look quite definitive. A lot of things today have been done by the textbook, and CLG's making this oh, look dear. like one of those days. All Benny forced to flash out a very nice solar flare once again. Aphromu trying to get himself into the fight, or not solar flare there, but getting himself in. Man Cloud is going to be the one. He's forced to zombie himself in and out of this fight. As Smithy goes to safety, the Requiem, is it going to be enough for anyone? No, it will not. Yeah, and the Baron regen going to try and take him up. Nick Wu, I don't think he can do anything right here, man. Not looking good. Had a great early game on that Vi. Got a few ganks in for his team, but everything has just gone from there as CLG figured out how XDG was playing and exactly what they were bringing to the table. Yeah, they do have to fall back. Oh, no, Dexter is gone. There's the barrier onto Double Lift. He still or does not have that red buff. He does not, yeah. so he is going to be forced to go down in this one because he can't get out. Aphromoo is doing what he can. They still have Baron buff on a few. And it looks like Aphromoo is going to get a little bit of help here from Link, but I think he should just let him go. Yeah, there is a pretty angry Shivana behind them. Trying oh, to get some no damage no way. Done. Nian coming out of nowhere here, but he might have got himself in a bad situation. Link from the side, they're just toying with XDG in mid. The ultimate will be back up very shortly for Aphromoo. They're going to continue. He dies by the Smithy. There's Nick Wu. It's one after the other. Aphromoo picks himself up a kill. Dexter flies back into the fight. Another kill coming in. Looking at Benny now. It could be the kill onto the Croc. And it's going to be a few isolated cues, a few hits from here and there. Nian with some flame breath, a whole bunch of elements, and a 20 to 4 score. Yeah, that looks like pretty much the end of the game. Yeah unless XTG is wanting to play this one out and take a bit more punishment. That fight went on for so long. Or XTG's like haphazard counter engage. The Dexter was all the way back in the base and then came back for that fight. That's gonna be it, 20 to four, CLG. You know, we talked about a lot about consistency this weekend and they have methodically dismantled their opponents consistently. Well, yeah, that was the shrug from Double Lift. Uh, that wasn't one CLG feels like that to work for. Very well played. You know, 8.08 from Link in the mid lane. Double Lift himself didn't really do much that game. It was Link and Dexter yeah. uh, just rushing the map with that Lulu cast synergy. Really great play as well. Link roaming to the top lane, completely shutting down Man Cloud. Man Cloud didn't get to roam. And not like you have to roam on Karthus. You can press R when you need to, but it helps that much more. We saw it effectively help for a dragon fight that XDG <laughs> took in their favor. But Cloud, or CLG did not let that happen one more time. They stopped it all. It's going to be a long road ahead uh, for XDG. It's been a very difficult season up to this point. It's not getting any easier after that 20 to 4 yeah. loss. They have a lot of work to do. There's a new team coming in here. Obviously, the chemistry is still.